Now, even with very simple rules, like the current password rule that we've just looked at, I much prefer creating rule objects. I almost always reach for a rule object rather than extending the validator. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a rule object now. I'm gonna show you how they work if you're not familiar with them already. But in the next part, we're gonna look at more advanced rule objects. So stick around even if you are familiar with rule objects, because we're gonna look at some tricks that we can use to just make sure things are nice and clean. So what we want to do to generate a rule object is go ahead and use Artisan. You can manually create it if you want, but we may as well use Artisan. And we're gonna make a rule, and I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this current password. I can type so let's hop over and this has created a rules folder and of course our current password rule is now in there now the great thing about this is it's already a class obviously so we uh, can pass things into the constructor really easily for a dependency injection eg we could pass our user in here if we wanted to we have a passes method which is a little bit clearer we get an attribute and a value very very simple we return a true or a false value from here and we get a method here called message. Now the reason that I like rule objects and we're gonna explore this a little bit later is we can dynamically control the message. We're working nicely in a class now so it just makes a bit more sense. But let's just switch this over. Let's switch the current password rule over to a rule object. The question is how do we put a rule object into this array of rules? Well it's really simple, we just knew it up and that means that we can inject what we need into this method. Now, when you're validating a user's current password, we know that we need a user. It's pretty obvious that we need to pass that user into there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass that user in as a dependency and I can type in this. I know that this should never be null because when I'm checking a user's password, I expect to have a user authenticated to be able to check their password. So let's go ahead and just pop this user into the class. We've got that now. And for the passes, that's really simple. We can just go ahead and grab exactly the same rule, but we're not doing all of this optional stuff where the user may or may not exist. We're not too sure because we've globally defined it. Now we're working with a solid class that we're actually passing a known dependency into, and that's why I like using rule objects. So now we can get rid of this uncertainty and we can say, well, we know this user has to exist. So we're gonna grab their password out. And the message, of course, is really simple. Let's just say current password is wrong, whatever, it's up to you. So let's go and now say ABC, and uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, we didn't pull the user dependency in. So let's go ahead, or user namespace, sorry. Let's go ahead and pull that in, give that a refresh. And there we go, current password is wrong. Type in my real password, and we get a passed uh, validation rule, great. So if you were new to rule objects, that's how we define a rule object out. A bit of the benefit of why these are better, mainly for dependency injection, and knowing that we've got that dependency in there. Uh, I think these are clearer as well, but we're gonna move over to the next part now, and we're gonna look at more advanced rule objects. And we're gonna switch over to a slightly more complex example, which is validating a coupon in the database. So maybe you give away coupons as part of your app. And we're gonna see how we might create a valid coupon validation rule object. 